Hey there, Matt Scratch here. Well, today I'm working on my 1991 Mercedes Benz 420 SEL, and uh, I've got what's actually a fairly common problem I now understand, and that's probably um, I've probably got clogged drains in my cal vent area here. So we're gonna take that apart and look at it, but I'll show you the problem it's causing here. See that? Hasn't rained for days and it's all wet under my carpet. And the car had rubber floor mats in it. That water's actually running down the inside the uh, firewall. It's not from wet boots or anything. It's uh, from the drain in here. It's probably clogged. And then what happens is the water overflows and it comes into the fresh air vent area and enters into the car. So we're going to take that apart and show you how to clean it out. And uh, also I'm going to be inspecting in there for rust because I suspect there might be some uh, rust issues in there as well that could be contributing. So we'll start by popping the hood here. Okay guys, we got to get this uh, whole panel off here. You can see why I'd be worried about rust issues. Uh, you can see in there, there's quite a bit growing in that corner. So that's a little concerning. Gonna have to check that out. So I think we probably start by peeling this off. Okay, so you also got to remove this, it looks like. Just seal back here. And I think I just need under the side cover to access the vents. There we go. Okay, guys, I got the uh, vent cover off there. So that's the drain right down there. So I'm going to vacuum all this debris out and then I'll blow through the drain with an air gun and make sure it's clear. So we'll go ahead and peel the other side off and have a look there. I see over on this side it's not a separate cover. So I'm going to have to pop the wiper arms off. Which looks like they have a little cover over a nut I think. I'm really struggling to get this up guys and I don't want to break anything. But So it's 13 millimeter on there. So we'll put a dab of oil on this nut here before we try to take it off. That way the threads will be lubricated as it comes off. There we go. Broke the spline loose. I'm not sure if that washer was supposed to be under there. Well guys, I succeeded in my goal of not breaking the uh, vent cover here. That one has the washer on this side. That makes more sense. There we go. Okay, so we'll just break that spline loose the same way we did the other one. Put a little oil in there too. Part of my problem with this side is I can't get a good vantage point. This car is so big. No matter where I stand, this is way out in the middle of the car. Okay, with the arms off, there's these, what's left of these rubber grommets. Mine are all disintegrating apart. And then this just lifts off. So we'll get that right out of there. And then these little tin tabs here, you just kind of pry them up. Use a screwdriver or a little pry bar if it's going to hurt your fingers. Okay, front of the cover lifts up and pulls away. 
just like that. See right in there, that's the drain. You can see all the dirt and mud around there. Um, back there, I don't think it's going to show on camera, but way back in there, and I can barely see it, there's a rust hole. So I think that's the bulk of my problem. But you can see how there's just a fresh air vent in here, so if this gets all backed up in here, it's going to flood right into the car. I'm actually pretty happy because it doesn't look near as bad as I thought it would in here. Like, see, there's things like this on this car that this gives me clues that there might be major rust issues. You can see, see, poke my finger right through there. Like, almost got my finger stuck. But yeah, there is definitely some rust issues going on there. I'm just going to go at it and get this all backed out of here. Okay, and now the same thing over here. I did notice on that side that somebody's already been in there with some sort of sealant and resealed around that drain. That drain doesn't appear to be uh, clogged on that side because I can suck through it with the vacuum and there's no resistance. Okay guys, I've put a light down there so you can clearly see. You see that giant rust hole right there next to the drain hole? That's what I was afraid of. That goes right up under the windshield and I can literally see the corner of the heater box there. So if you were just, uh, in fact, cleaning out your vents, you'd pretty well be done right now. The only other thing I'd recommend doing is blowing some compressed air through them, which I'm going to do here before we're done. But of course, i got to patch that up before I can put this back together. You can see over on this side is in much better shape, but it does look like somebody's added some sealant in here before. You can see it's also got a bit of a hole there, and there's some sealant poking through the hole, so that tells me... Somebody's added sealant to that. That's not factory. Hi Milo. What you doing bud? You want to be famous? You want to be on YouTube? No. Too late. Too late. You're going to be on YouTube. This is pretty awesome. I didn't realize those mats came right out. Um, this side didn't come out so easy. I had to guide it around the gas pedal and the uh, accelerator button under the gas pedal there but I've already vacuumed out the water on this side there wasn't that much on this side but we'll get around to the other side and show you just how bad it is I have the mats here drying on the hood of the neon I already vacuumed the water mostly out of the foam on this one with the uh, wet dry vac there and I'm gonna do the same on this one so you can see how wet it is over here so I've just been going at it with the uh, little karcher here. This has come in pretty handy. I really like this vacuum. Okay, that went rather well. I found a couple areas like right in that corner was a low spot. And then uh, right where the uh, back of the seat mounts there was a low spot. All the water was collecting in those two areas, so just by putting the vacuum nozzle in those two areas, I was able to collect up most of the water. And uh, let's just see how much is in the vacuum. It feels pretty full, actually. Wow, that was all from in the car. Well, I just got back from my local Canadian Tire here, and I'm pretty sure I've got this uh, water leak well under control now. I've got the car all opened up, venting, and I uh, took the front carpets right out and put them in the shop overnight, and they're already all dry. But I'm going to leave them out for a while because the uh, back carpets were wet as well, and um, because of all this channeling and stuff, from the front I think that'll be enough to vent it and dry it I mean I really should be removing the seats and pulling all the carpet up but I just don't have time to do that so I'm trying to get it as dry as I can as quick as I can doing it this way
Anyways, here is the plan. Firstly, I did notice some mold growing while there was that stuff on the back armrest. And then there was some on the underlay of the uh, carpeting. So I'm going to be spraying this around in the carpeting and the underlay foam and all that sort of stuff. And just making sure there's no mold growing in the car. This is an alcohol based product. And we got some Flex Seal as seen on TV. Now you're seeing it on YouTube. Got some brake clean nuts, kind of unrelated. Although I might actually spray that around in there. I used some just soapy water and cleaned up in there, but maybe I'll uh, use some brake clean to do a final clean up in there before I apply any of these products. The first thing I'm going to actually put on is this uh, rust converter. And the idea there is to stabilize that metal underneath there so that it doesn't keep rusting and, and lift whatever I put on there off. This stuff, according to the ad, is supposed to be pretty amazing. So I am going to go ahead and hose out this area with uh, brake clean just because it will uh, give that uh, flex seal the best chance of uh, biting into the surface. And it will also make sure that the rust converter I'm going to use on the rust in there actually gets to the rust and isn't, uh, because that's a water-based product, so you got to make sure there's no grease or anything over top the rust that you're putting it on. I don't want to hose too much in here because it is going straight into the car, but this is a very uh, fast evaporating product, so it should be fine. So I'm going to be flex sealing this whole area in here. I know you can't really see it, but it's just basically a small little, there's a divider wall right here, so it's a contained area. If I can get a good coating of flex seal in the whole area, then it will form its own uh, little container in there to catch the water. And as long as that flex seal is none broken all the way into the drain there, like I'm not going to mask anything, it'll be all one piece, so it should be watertight. Okay guys, this is a organic product. It's basically a plant-based acid and uh, it uh, neutralizes the oxidization process, I guess, in essence. Um, anyways, I don't consider it a permanent solution to rust and uh, I wouldn't consider what I'm doing here to be a permanent solution or a permanent repair. Um, really like the car, so... There's a good chance I will fix it properly, but that's going to be a lot of work. It's going to involve completely removing the windshield and dash and cutting out the old metal and welding new stuff in. So for now, to stop the water from getting in and ruining the rest of the car, I'm going to uh, be doing this quick little repair. So this stuff, you want to shake it really well, and then uh, you don't want to return it to the uh, jug after you've used it. So get a separate container I'm just gonna use this paint cap and uh, yeah little brush and brush it in there it's just a brown solution you really want to soak it on there so have a rag or something handy in case you get it running down somewhere where you don't want but see there's quite a <laughs> I know you guys can't see, but I'm reaching up under the windshield for quite a ways here today. I can't even get my hand up there, but luckily this brush is going up there, so I'm getting a good coat of this in there and letting it all run down over any rust areas. As you can see, I coated that area in there, and it's just working on drying. Honestly, I'm thinking this Flex Seal might be a good idea if you own one of these, uh, W126 cars um, and even if it's not showing any signs of rust in these areas if you just put a coating of flex seal at, like at least up to here then the whole area that's always wet where the water kind of sits has that uh, coating and the water wouldn't touch the metal so in theory that would be uh, the ultimate protection and uh, the best way to prevent rust from happening in this area of the car Okay guys, we are progressing here. The uh, rust converter is just about dry and I went and put this uh, Moldex. I, I soaked the back of the mats completely like that foam on them. And I'm going to do that a few times and just soak them and let it dry again. 
because there's really no way to like clean that mold off so I just have to make sure that it's completely dead and then as a last step I'll vacuum it again when it's all dry so that if there's any um, loose dry spores they'll vacuum off. So I, I figured this old uh, lacquer thinner container is just about the right thickness of metal for my little patch it'll be easy to just form in there with my fingers so uh, yeah that's what I'm gonna do. See if we can uh, bust a hole in this. There we go. There we go, at the very same time I made myself a new drain pan. Now before we get too far progressed here, I'm just going to take a piece of 120 grit sandpaper and rough up both sides of this so that whatever products I put over it stick really good to it. And there we go, both sides are nice and rough, so the flex seal, the flex seal should stick nicely to them. Even though it says it will bond to just about any surface, I want to give it the best chance to uh, last on there a long time. So I'm going to be making two individual patches, one to go up in the main hole there where it's actually leaking into the car, but there's another hole right here in this corner. I could weld that one up, there's good enough access if I had the battery out I could do it, but since I'm already doing this I'm going to just do it this way. And uh, the reason why separate pieces is just so that there's uh, an area for the flex seal to bond to the car's original structure in between. That way it won't, you know, lift off. That's the plan. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball that in there. So something like that, I think. Yeah, that fits like a glove in there. But the uh, rust converter is not completely dry in there yet, so... And I take the patch back out for now. Fits so good it's hard to get back out. So that's going to work out nicely. What I'm going to do is put a layer of flex seal down first. Then lay this into it. And then uh, I think I'll let that dry sort of cure in there. And then another layer of flex seal over it all. They claim you can do a bunch of thin coats. So that's my plan to just keep doing thin coats in there. Until the can's almost empty. I think this situation where haste makes waste, so we're going to actually wait till tomorrow to put that flex seal in there. I feel like that uh, rust converter is not completely dry, and then we won't get proper adhesion. Well, okay guys, we got our gloves on, we got our flex seal, it's nice and hot out. That rust converter I put on uh, last night dried up nicely, and I got this little brush here just to help out in case I need to work this into a crevice where it won't reach. So we'll give this a good shake and we're just going to put a thin coat on to start with and then try and get those patches I made stuck down in there on top of it and then we'll put many coats over it to get a nice thick layer. Okay, I'm just going to clear the nozzle on this. Just point the can down and spray it out so it clears out that, that stuff will stick up the nozzle for sure. So that does look like quite a nice product now. I think I'm going to give it just a second to tack up before I drop those patches in there. I think that's laid down in there quite nicely. I'll, I'll show you guys this after. I just, uh, for now i got to get it in there while this is curing. I'll just try and get you guys a view of my patches here. So you can see the uh, one up there. And then I'll, uh, I'll get you a view on the other one here. It's kind of tricky to see in there. I'm going to have to turn the camera sideways. Right there. So the important thing is, is that the uh, edges of the patch seal down everywhere. So there's not a big air gap. And then... Basically that patch will be the bogging layer and then the flex seal is going to form the upper layer, the waterproof basin in there. Okay guys, I'm back. It's been about half an hour. Seems to have cured up pretty good. I'm going to be adding a coat to the outside of that one uh, patch as well because it goes right through there. I'm not going to get too crazy thick here because I'm uh, 
going to be putting a lot of coats on here and I don't want it to uh, get too thick and not dry properly. It's actually working really well guys. I can barely see where my patches are already. I am getting it on the corner of the windshield there but I think I can just scrape it off with a razor blade when I'm done so I'm just kind of letting it build up on there for now. Okay guys, you can see I've got about uh, six coats of Flex Seal in there now. And uh, firstly, I'm really impressed with this product. I actually would recommend it for an uh, application like this. Um, I think it's going to seal it up nicely in there. I can't even see where my little patches are anymore. It goes on a lot thicker than I thought. And uh, it's really, it really is like a rubber-like product when it dries. It's not like a asphalt or anything. It, in fact, I got a little bit on my fingers there, and I hit it right away with some solvent and still couldn't get it off. It's really stuck on there. It's good stuff. So I went ahead and cleaned up the other side over there and put a coat in there as well. This side was still in good shape, but I figured, well, we might as well put a coat on there and protect it before the rust even gets to it. The uh, flex seal's all dried up in there looks great so I've got the covers all cleaned up and we're gonna put them back on one last thing I want to do and you should do this if you're cleaning out your drains don't just clean out this area use an air gun to clear the drains um, so I'm gonna stick this down there and blow them out I've already vacuumed through them and it doesn't seem like there's any resistance but just to make sure there's not something partially blocking it I'll blow them out as well So there we go, we know our drains are clear now, so now that there's no hole for the water to leak into the car, we know that it's going to drain out in the correct location. One last thing I do have to do is just clean this flex seal off the corner of the windshield, and for that I'm just going to use a razor blade scraper. Yeah, it really is like a rubber product. There is also a couple drains right here. That you want to make sure are clear so maybe we'll we'll blow through them as well I think they just come out under there so I think the trick is to get this worked into the corner here first and I know you got to set the back edge in first too Got to make sure those clips go under the windshield, not over the windshield. Okay, well we're going to go ahead and lay the other half in now. We'll get both plastic halves in and then we'll go ahead and uh, add the uh, rubber over top, the rubber seals. So the seal does just go one way. You can see the sort of rough side there, it's got metal reinforcement in it. Now that goes out. Okay, so we got that seal completely on. Just make sure it's all seated down. Now we just have to put these metal clips on here again. But they do have a little bump on one side that's not on the other. That goes out. I can see there's a little hole in the metal to catch that. So slide it on with the little indent facing. Okay, now it's time to put the seal back on. I can see it's got a bit of a memory to it, so we're going to try and put it on the same way it was. So it doesn't fight us so bad. There we go, that's on. So now there should be another fastener right here, but I don't seem to have that. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just put the windshield wiper arms back on. You put your little grommet seals on there. Mine are pretty pretty well toast but I don't have any better ones to put on so so there is a difference this one goes on the right side the passenger side and this straight one goes to the driver's side we're just gonna line it up kinda with the bottom of the windshield there that should be perfect obviously we're gonna add the uh, the washer and the nut We'll be uh, installing some brand new Michelin wiper blades right away here. 
right there. Okay, now we just got to get a 13 millimeter socket and we'll snug those down. Make sure you don't overdo it when you tighten these down. Notice I'm using a smaller ratchet than the one I used to take it apart. And just hold on to the arm. Hold the arm steady as you uh, fork it down so you're not putting pressure on the wiper motor. Unfortunately, those covers broke and there's not much I can do about that. Yeah, I got these brand new Michelin wiper blades. They actually came with the car, believe it or not. They were just in the trunk. This car is full of its little bonuses. Okay, guys, there you have it. I got uh, the wipers on. Everything's back together. I'm not sure I might have to move that lower wiper arm up a bit. Looks a little low, but it's borderline, so I'll wait till I turn it on to see. Well, guys, I'm not one to uh, share unproven advice with you. And as you can see, it's actually raining right now. So uh, uh, it's already rained really good a couple times since I've done this leak repair. Really put it to the test. And uh, I left the mats out at first. There's been absolutely no water intrusion into the car now. So I'd say I got the problem completely taken care of. I went ahead and put the mats back in. I've got the uh, car all dried out nicely inside now. And uh, yeah, the leak's completely uh, sealed up. And... Uh, I'd say good for a number of years. I think that that flex seal is actually going to hold up pretty good in there. Keep in mind that even the factory uses a seam sealer in there. Uh, you pretty well need something in there to waterproof it. And uh, the flex seal is rated to repair roofs and stuff. So I think it's going to hold up pretty good in there. It's been a few weeks now since the uh, cow leak repair. And uh, I just noticed something else that you should do at the same time is down in this... Uh, area where all your electrical and plumbing is and everything there was a bunch of leaves in here and I actually recorded me uh, vacuuming them out but somehow I lost the clip so uh, just check down in here and get down in here with the vacuum and make sure there's not a bunch of leaves because that just collects up moisture and it's going to lead to all sorts of issues down the road one more thing I've noticed since the uh, leak repair is that the weather stripping doesn't come right to the end here at least on my car it seems to be a little short, so I'm either going to find another little piece of uh, weather stripping or something to put in there to fill up that hole or uh, put a little bit of caulking in there. I just got to seal that up because a lot of leaves and stuff are actually getting in through right there. But it does still have one issue, and that's uh, a residual musty odor in the car just from being closed up and also from having the water leak. And so here's my uh, quick and easy solution. I'm just going to burn down a couple candles in here. I've got cinnamon going in the back there. And fresh linen up front. I've taken the necessary precautions to make sure it's not going to harm the car any. And I'll be hanging out here all day keeping an eye on it. I've got some other stuff to do to the car. So I hope you found this tip and others in the video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Consider sharing the video to help other W126 owners and have yourself a great day.